Nintendo, what are you, what are you, what are you doing, buddy? What are you doing? I see what you're doing. A lot of people see what you're doing. A lot of people seem to be okay with it. Some aren't okay with it. And it's just something that I want to discuss. It involves, of course, the influx of Mario sports games that we've gotten thus far on the Nintendo Switch. We, of course, have our third game coming up with Mario Strikers Battle League releasing very soon for the Switch. And it was something I made a video on, kind of a little bit concerned about some of the aspects of the game, some of the content of the game. And these are just observations that I've made with my little blue eye, staring, wondering, taking notes, analyzing. And really what it boils down to is fool me once, Nintendo. Shame on you. Fool me a third time, Nintendo. Like, I don't know. Is it my fault? Is it your fault? Whose fault is it that this is the way you've decided to go with the Mario sports game? So that's what I want to talk about today. The three Mario sports games on the Nintendo Switch thus far and have a discussion about it. Have a little back and forth, a little pros, a little cons about this, because Obviously, there's a trend going on with this. Now, of course, our first game that was introduced for the Mario sports games on the Nintendo Switch was Mario Tennis Aces. And this was a game I remember when it came out. It came out at around the end of June of 2018. I was at Too Many Games 2018, exhausted and not really feeling it. Somehow I got looped into a stream to, sh to stream it live from the event. But I thought it was a fun game, but there was something I, I kind of noticed about it. You know, it, it felt a little bit lacking in terms of content. It felt like eh, there should have been, you know, some more some more characters, some more, more more game modes, you know, more more tennis courts and stuff like that. And I kind of gave it a bit of a pass because obviously this game came out a little over a year that the Nintendo Switch had been on the market. Nintendo probably didn't anticipate the system being so successful. They obviously heavily loaded up 2017. So maybe they were just seeing how it was going to go in 2017 and then sort of pivot and adjust when talking about 2018 games. And this game came out, it was pretty fun. And as the game sort of progressed, we got more and more stuff that was added into the game. It seemed like a good thing, you know? It seemed like something, okay, well, I mean, let's be real. Nintendo probably rushed this to meet the success of the Switch, and now they're introducing more content along the way. Okay, not a huge deal, but you already see where I'm going with this and you already see sort of where the problems lie. Now let's go to Mario Golf Super Rush. Now this was a game that came out in 2021. It was a game that I was really looking forward to. I like Mario Golf games. I still think Mario Golf on the N64 is an excellent game. We've been playing that sort of off the air on the spawn cast. The mini golf stuff is great. And then you got Mario Golf Super Rush. And this was a game that, you know, I was pretty excited for and I don't know. It, it, it felt like it was just sort of missing something. It was missing that pizzazz factor. It was missing that sort of wow factor. The story mode that was touted was really nothing more than a tutorial for the game. There wasn't any sort of mini golf. The actual golf itself felt very golfy, not like a Mario golf game, but more of like putting Mario into another pre-existing golf game. It didn't feel very sort of arcadey or over the top. Then of course, they, they said, hey, we're doing more content. The first character was a character that was actually available in the aforementioned story mode, which was Toadette. And I was like, Toadette is, is, clear, is clearly in the game. She's, she's clearly in the game. She's in the game's tutorial mode. She has all of her animations. Why is she not a character that I can select from day one? And then they, they introduced Toadette. They introduced a couple more courses and stuff like that. And I was kind of like, huh. You know, that's kind of shitty. You know, I'm not, I'm not the biggest fan of that. You know, you're you're essentially holding back content, it seems. But maybe there's a valid reason for it. You know, you could always say, oh, pandemic, COVID. They, they rushed this game out to the market. They just wanted something solid for 2021. Okay, okay. Maybe there was a reason behind it. And now we've come to Mario Strikers Battle League. And there's not even a question with this as to whether or not there's going to be more stuff added into this game. Now, Nintendo just did a sort of test for the game where you can get acclimated with it. They're going to do an online test as well, previous to the game's release to sort of test out servers and stuff. And the game looks pretty robust. I mean, it definitely has that sort of over-the-top Mario fun factor that 
maybe a game like Mario Golf Super Rush did not feature. And, it, you know, it, it's a soccer game. It's a soccer game with a lot of different things going on in it. Um, they're really focusing on the online portion of the game. But even Nintendo themselves has come out and said, hey, you know, these are the characters available. Not, not a huge roster. Daisy is not one of the characters. But don't fret. We are planning free post-game launch content that will be added into the game that we'll talk about later. And it's like, okay, okay, wait a minute. The, the, the content is clearly ready. You clearly made a conscious decision that you were going to add more content into the game, but you, you sort of cut it out to sort of trickle and drip feed it over the next few months. Now, Let's talk about the whole reasoning behind this, because there's definitely two different mentalities when it comes to this. There's two different camps. There are the people that are like, well, you know, it's a good thing because you don't want to burn yourself out with all the content within the first month. And, you know, by Nintendo adding in more content as time goes on, it gives you an incentive to revisit the game. I understand that mentality. I, I you know, but but to me, my rebuttal to that is always, if a game is quality, it doesn't need to have the, the carrot dangling in front of you to have extra content that's coming at a later date to get you to want to revisit it. If a game is quality, you constantly want to play that game regardless of, of, of anything. You know, you look back to the, the PS2, the GameCube, the Xbox era. You know, I feel like really that was a golden era for video games that a lot of people don't talk about because... It was before the stuff like DLC and, and microtransactions. It was kind of like you released that game. That was it. You didn't have the ability to patch things in. You didn't have the ability to add things in at a later date. You had to release a quality game that people were going to want to play. And when you look at online games from that era or just games in general, like Halo 2, I don't think Halo 2 had a content problem. Because the game was so damn good. There were so many different modes. There was so much stuff in that game that people wanted to experience and wanted to play. They eventually did some additional DLC for the game. But even without that, it was a super quality game. It didn't feel like it needed a big content update in order to do that. And when I compare games like Gran Turismo, which I obviously am a big fan of, you know, looking at the PlayStation 5 version of Gran Turismo 7, there's a little over 400 cars in the game right now. In Gran Turismo 4 for the PlayStation 2, there was over 700 cars. And, of course, there's going to be people that say, well, technology has advanced. You have to do things like the interior of the cars and all this sort of stuff. And to me, it's like, okay, like, that's not my problem. Obviously, in the previous games, there was more content that's now being cut and added in at later dates. Gran Turismo 7, really at its core, is essentially a live service game. And it feels like that's what Nintendo is doing with the Mario sports games, essentially making them a live service game. Now, it is nice that you do have sort of an incentive to go back and play the game. But for me, personally, I rarely go back to a game that I feel like, oh, you know, I, I've explored all this. I've kind of, you know, gotten to the limit with this game. I don't care about the new content. I did check out the Halo Season 2 stuff. I played it for like two days with, with a couple of the Spawn cast guys, and like, that was it. I was, I was done. I, I saw everything I needed to see. I experienced everything I wanted to experience, and like, that was it. I just feel like a quality game doesn't need this just trickle feed of, of content and this trickle feed of stuff to make the game be attractive a few months down the road. When you look at a game like Mario Strikers Battle League, they're obviously putting a lot of emphasis into things like the online multiplayer with things like the leagues and stuff like that. Does the game really need that additional carrot dangling in front of you to want to revisit it if it's a good game? Like to me, that's that's what's going to keep people coming back. That competitive aspect, that online battle league stuff, constantly jockeying for position and trying to be a part of the best club and trying to be a part of the best team, which we, we really still haven't gotten a lot of details about that yet. I guess we're just going to have to take a wait and see approach with that and hope for the best, but realize it's a first party Nintendo game. Like they're not exactly known for having the best online experiences, but I'm willing to give them the benefit of the doubt, but there's obviously a trend going on with this. There's, there's this trend of Nintendo doing these these games, essentially releasing them for $60 on day one, 
and then uh, drip feeding you content over the next few months or even over the next year or two. And it's just like something about that just rubs me the wrong way. I think maybe if these were budget titles, you know, $40 on day one, and then maybe at the end you do like, you know, a, a big collector's edition with all the additional content added into it. Like that would be a better thing because when you think about it, the physical adopters on day one are really getting screwed because they probably bought the game physically because they wanted it all on the cartridge. They didn't want to have to worry about things like additional downloads and additional stuff. And this isn't something that is, you know, questionable. Oh, well, maybe, you know, maybe Nintendo decided at a later date, hey, we're going to add some more juice to this game. We're going to add some more, more stuff to it. No, 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 no. The decision has already been made. Nintendo themselves has already tweeted it out that there's going to be free content updates. So it's like, well, why buy the physical? You know, the physical, you're going to have to download these patches on it. So I don't know. I, I, I don't know what the right or wrong answer is. And I don't think that there necessarily is a right or wrong answer. Is this a good practice? Or a bad practice. I think what it really boils down to is what do you prefer? You know, what do you prefer from your games? Do you want your games to have, you know, a vast majority, almost all of the content on day one? And then if a company decides to do additional content, then that's cool with you. Do you want a game to be 100% complete on day one and not worry about additional content? Or do you like this more sort of games as a service thing? And if you do like this more sort of games as a service thing where content is obviously being held back, content is obviously being held for a later date, how do you feel about paying $60, a, a the same price of a game as like The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild for a sports game that's severely lacking content? on day one and for the first you know few weeks i don't know i don't know maybe i'm just old maybe i'm just you know a, a negative nancy uh, i think i'd make an ugly nancy you know uh, beard it's not really not really and this isn't really a nancy face do i look like a nancy I, I don't quite think so but i don't know maybe i'm just getting you know older but as someone who has seen the rise of video games in pretty much every era that that matters i mean yes the intellivision era was an era and stuff like that w whatever really the nes jump started video games for a vast majority of people as someone who's been playing since the nes days and has seen the rise in video games seen you know different things that work different things that didn't work has seen you know what happens when you get more power and when you get you know bigger hardware and software to where you could do more imaginative experiences and someone who has seen you know pretty much every era of gaming just to see it sort of regress you know sort of take a step back because of these live service games where you buy the game and it's not the full meat and potatoes you know it's like it's like a it's like a half of the steak and like one little one little slop of potatoes it's like well where's the rest of my steak you know where's where's my bread where's my drink oh you gotta wait for that bucko but thanks for your money thanks for your money on day one to to cover the full price of this game i want to hear your feedback in the comments section down below because this is going to be a very spicy topic there are going to be some outlandishly hot takes i've already seen a bunch of outlandishly hot takes hot takes on twitter when i talk about this on twitter people are like you're wrong look at the games from back in the day there's not more content in them and it's like well, more content or better content, you know, is, is you know, uh, man, it's a debate that can go a lot of different ways. So let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you are new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button, like, comment and share this video with your friends. Get their opinions on it as well. Hit the bell notification, please, for the love of God. And as always, I will catch you guys on the next video, hopefully with something a bit more positive, but it probably won't be later.